Okay, here it is. The problem that we've all been waiting for, the fraction problem. Um, there's, we can solve this by using two-step equations. Um, if you notice, for this problem, uh, I'm adding a 2 thirds and I'm dividing by 2. So if you want to use the reverse order of operations and, um, in, and inverse operations, meaning undo adding 2 thirds on both sides, and then undo dividing by 2 by multiplying by 2 on both sides, you can do that. And there's nothing wrong with that. And I would actually hope that you would try that to go and see if you can get the right answer. However, for simplicity and for later on in your math, uh, math career, a lot of times it's easier, and I think it's also helpful for a lot of students that also deal with mathematics, is to just get rid of the fractions. Don't deal with fractions if you don't have to. So to get rid of these fractions, I'm going to grab a different marker here. To get rid of the fractions, what we can do is we can multiply them by a common denominator. Remember, um, or sorry, a common multiple. Because if I multiply, or I'm saying denominator multiple is same. So what if I do is I take, if I, multiply, if I find out what the common denominator is, and then multiply each fraction by that number, all right, what's going to happen is since my denominators are both going to divide into, uh, into that number, then what's going to happen is I'm going to get rid of the fractions. And I'll show you that in a second. So we look here for our common denominator. Well, between 2 and 3, the common denominator is 6, meaning that's the smallest number that both 2 and 3 divide into. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide each fraction by 6. Now, a lot of students get mixed up with this because they want to divide 6 on the bottom. That would be 1 6. Now, I'm multiplying by 6, or we could write it as 6 over 1 if you want to write it as an equation. You can multiply on the left side, or you can multiply on the right side. It's OK. It doesn't matter by the commutative property of addition, or I'm sorry, multiplication, right? So now, just multiply across, or what you'll see is how to, you know, 6 times 1, one and 1 times 2 would be 6 over 2, which 6 divided by 2 is 3. You can also, just for purposes, um, just divide this as 6 divided by 2 equals 3r. And then plus 6 times 2 is 12. 3 times 1 is 4. 12 divided by 4 is, uh, I'm sorry, 12 divided by 3 is 4. So there we go. Now I have a two-step equation that it's a lot easier for me to solve. Because I think with a lot of times with fractions, you know, since these don't have the same denominators, remember, since you're going to subtract on both sides, you would have to get the common denominator anyways just to subtract them. So I think it's a lot easier to do this off the bat, get rid of the fractions, and now let's just solve this two-step equation. So by using the reverse order of operations and uh, inverse operations, I see that I need to undo addition and subtraction first. So instead of adding 4, I'm going to subtract a 4 on both sides. I get a negative 1 equals 3r. Remember, both sides of the equal sign. That was by the subtraction property quality. Now I need to look at what's happening to my variable. What is preventing it from being by itself? Well, it's being multiplied by 3. So to undo multiplication, I need to divide by 3. And what I obtain is a negative 1 divided by negative 3 is a negative 1 third equals r. And there you go. All done. So I hope you enjoyed. Thanks.